Greetings, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Geske, Assistant Professor of Medicine and Cardiologist at Mayo Clinic. During today's Trending Topics video, we will be discussing reverse order liver transplantation. That's liver transplant before heart transplant. I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Sudhir Kushwaha, Professor of Medicine and the Director of our Heart Transplant Clinic, as well as Dr. Rocky Daly, Professor of Surgery and Surgical Director of the Heart Transplant Clinic. Welcome. Good, good to be good here. Good morning. Well, recently you've experienced successful reverse order liver heart transplantation. When, when are some times when you might actually think about combined organ transplant, either the reverse or the kind of more traditional uh, combination? Well, as you know, Jeff, uh, there are certain situations where the heart and the liver um, are both affected, sometimes by a systemic disease process, which requires a combined organ transplant. Other times when the severity of the heart failure is such that the liver ends up getting cirrhosis, and um, we're familiar with that in, in conditions particularly where there's severe right heart failure. And then there are other diseases where there might be a concomitant liver process going on, and we're considering heart transplant because the patient has heart failure as well. And so those are the situations where we might consider um, doing a combined operation. Um, and we have several patients who we've done over the years who have undergone combined heart-liver transplant in the normal order, which is heart first followed by liver. And so we have quite an experience as an institution in, in doing this. Rocky might want to comment a little bit about that. So when, we, when the patients have failure in both organs, then we consider them for combined heart and liver transplant. Uh, when we normally do the surgery, if, we, if they need this, and actually we have quite a bit of experience with combined heart and liver transplant. We've done uh, about 35 cases, which turns out to be the most in the world. Uh, so it's, it's not a real common operation, uh, but uh, there are some patients that obviously benefit from it. The heart doesn't tolerate the ischemic time as well as the liver does. So normally, uh, we would, in these operations, we do the heart transplant, and then they immediately begin the liver transplant. Uh, and they're doing the liver transplant then with a, with a stronger heart, a better heart, because uh, we've just put it in, and hopefully that heart has tolerated the ischemic time in the surgery. So obviously we have to select the, the donors properly so the heart will be good uh, for a liver transplant. Uh, in, in these cases, for immunologic reasons, we considered uh, reversing the order of the surgery uh, to, to deal with the immunology. Well, tell me a little bit about that immunology. How do the elevated yeah. antibody levels, how does, how does that end up affecting this process? Well, transplantation um, has become very successful um, over the last several years, largely because we have very good immunosuppressives. Now, those immunosuppressives are good at suppressing um, what we call cellular rejection. And in those, in those situations, we have predominantly T cells uh, which can attack the newly transplanted heart and cause damage and ultimately rejection. But the uh, drugs we give actually suppress that quite well, such that severe cardiac rejection, cellular rejection, I mean, is actually quite rare. Now, there are patients who have very elevated antibody levels, and these are what we call preformed antibodies, and quite often, um, younger women, by virtue of having uh, been pregnant previously, will have pre-existing preformed antibody levels. Patients who have had previous transfusions can sometimes have uh, circulating antibodies, which under normal circumstances don't do them any harm. But when it comes to transplantation, we have these very high levels, which we can measure now and quantify using the current technology. Uh, which gives us an idea of what would happen if there were antibodies to particular antigens on the donor heart. So if you have very high antibody levels um, and the donor heart expresses a certain antigen, then those antibodies will really create a lot of damage and cause um, 
severe rejection, which is very, very difficult to treat because these antibodies, we can try and remove them, but they always come back because the B cells which make them are still there mm -hmm. in the recipient. And so it creates a situation where um, we are unable to transplant certain patients because we're unable to find an appropriate match for them because they have very high um, circulating antibodies and we have to make sure that the donor we get doesn't express the antigens to which that patient has antibodies. So I hope that's reasonably clear, um, but uh, with this um, concept of reverse order really came about as a result of our experience with combined heart-liver transplantation. We noticed that these uh, patients whom we had the largest series, as, as Rocky just um, stated, um, really didn't suffer much in the way of rejection or even antibody-mediated re rejection. So I'll let Rocky comment a little bit more about that, actually. Right. We noticed in our experience that the incidence of rejection in the patients who had combined heart-liver was much less than the rejection in the patients who had just isolated heart transplant. So uh, that got us to thinking that uh, this is uh, obviously a immunologically favorable state and uh, we have the opportunity to collaborate with our colleagues in other areas of transplant through the transplant center here which is a multidisciplinary uh, undertaking and the kidney uh, uh, transplant uh, team was having the same experience when they were involved with combined liver and kidney transplant mm -hmm. and they also noticed uh, this and noticed uh, that the antibody titers went down now just the antibodies to that donor not all the antibodies uh, but just the antibodies to that donor didn't seem to be up as high so uh, we, we had this group of patients who are uh, young patients uh, and have become sensitized. They have a lot of antibodies uh, and had the need for both heart and liver transplant. So many of them are patient, congenital heart disease patients that have developed uh, cardiac cirrhosis uh, from their uh, congenital disease, often Fontan physiology. Uh, so they've had multiple operations, multiple transfusions, but still they're young people in their 30s and 40s, and uh, you, you're trying to find a way to help them. We had really very little success with just reducing the antibodies with various medical means, which is um, consistent with other reports. And uh, so it occurred that to us that we might, we might consider transplanting the liver uh, as a, prior to putting the heart in, and that might follow through, as Sadir said, in terms of reducing the antibodies. Uh, so we, we uh, propose doing that. Um, and, uh, yeah, and what sort of what sort of technical challenges did you run into now that you've identified this issue and you've come up with a novel solution? As you as you began to approach it, what are the, some of the considerations in that regard? Well, from a, yeah, from a surgical standpoint, it's intimidating because if the patient has had multiple cardiac surgical procedures, and then we're considering uh, doing the liver transplant while the heart, which has also been procured from the same donor, is just kind of waiting, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on ice uh, in the corner of the operating room. Uh, the ischemic time for the heart gets very long. And then we still have a heart operation where uh, there are multiple previous surgeries and, uh, uh, you know, pretty massive adhesions and a long dissection. So we, we have to work carefully with our liver uh, colleagues, uh, our liver surgeon colleagues, and we we kind of uh, work back and forth. Uh, we'll ideally we do uh, as much of the cardiac dissection as possible without having to go on bypass, and then they come and do as much as they can do, and they actually remove the liver while the organs are in transit, so that as soon as they arrive, they can sew the liver in, which is a little different from what they normally have to do. Um, so timing is everything. Timing is everything. It's like this yeah. choreography that has ah. to happen because the, we can't, the patient won't tolerate hepatectomy for a long time. So we really, but on the other hand, we don't want to have the organ sitting in the corner while we're still working. We want to be really, really ready for them when they arrive in the operating room. 
So we end up being limited, I suppose, by um, um, having organs which are close by. So um, some of the organs we might take from further afield, because of the ischemic time, as Rocky already mentioned, is, is a limiting factor. We're really confined to having fairly local donors for this sort of situation, wouldn't you say, Rocky? Yeah, we need uh, donors that are not too far away and obviously vigorous enough to tolerate what's going to be a longer than usual cardiac ischemic time. Um, the other challenging thing is uh, that we don't know how effective the liver will be, to what degree it will remove uh, antibodies to some. For some of these patients that have really, they have some massive levels of antibodies. And uh, so we have some uh, criteria that we've developed to try to select patients with uh, uh, situations where at least the liver has a chance. Uh, yeah. And we, we do that with a prospective cross match, which we accept as positive, but Sudhir might want to comment on that. Yeah, we try, and, we try and limit the degree of mismatch, to put it in simple terms. I mean, you can get um, uh, high degrees of mismatch and low degrees of mismatch, and we try and minimize so that we get the best match possible in terms of um, antigen and an antibody matching, so that um, the, you know, the fact of the matter is that I'm thinking back to the first patient we did. I mean, she had a lot of uh, circulating antibodies, um, very high levels, but in fact, the major mismatches were only in three, now uh, three antigens. So um, th that allowed us to limit the exposure to the, um, to the donor liver. And we were very concerned. We, we, we went into this with some trepidation, mm -hmm. um, obviously because the price of failure would have been a bad outcome for that patient. And um, I think we um, thought about it and formulated this strategy, and we minimized the degree of mismatch. And um, luckily, the appropriate um, uh, donor came up. Actually, the donor was at St. Mary's, um, our institution. So that also minimized the ischemic time issue, which, which Rocky was just talking about. So it sounds like a lot of moving pieces between the antigen matching, yeah. having the organs close enough to have the timing right, minimizing the ischemic time. What, what's the Mayo experience been like so far, and where do you see it going next? Well, we've, we've done four cases so far. They've all been successful. Um, we uh, are still limited by some patients having a much higher uh, uh, reaction prospect and the cr prospective cross match where we haven't been able to always do the surgery. We have a kind of limit. We, we accept a positive cross match, but we won't accept a positive cross match that's extremely high because that tells us that perhaps the antibody activity is more than the liver will deal with. So we've developed a protocol where we, we will accept a, a positive cross match up to a certain level, a channel shift level. Mm -hmm. um, whether we could uh, expand that, I don't know. At some point, we'll have a problem, and, and as Sadir said, the patients will be the people that will suffer from, you know, uh, pushing the frontier maybe a little bit too hard. So we're being careful with that. Uh, there isn't really data to help us. Uh, uh, um, the yeah. limiting factor is getting the donors, uh, and that's the limiting factor, of course, in transplantation, is having uh, donor availability. So we have a, a large heart transplant waiting list. We have a number of patients on the waiting list waiting for this procedure. And uh, it's uh, very challenging and yeah, disheartening. The wait, the wait yeah. time is, can be very lengthy, unfortunately. And it's very, it's very difficult for these patients. And uh, we really um, feel for them because, you know, they're, they're very limited because they have such severe uh, cardiac failure and liver failure as well, and so, um, but there's nothing we can really do to um, speed the process up. I mean, as Rocky said, perhaps we could consider changing our criteria, but then we're also exposing a um, greater degree of risk as well. Great. Well, I'd really like to thank you both for joining me today. It's been 
fantastic learning about some of these new groundbreaking approaches to both heart and liver transplant, or liver and heart transplant as it may be in this case. Uh, I'd really like to thank you both, Rocky and Sadir, for a fantastic discussion. And I'd like to thank you as well for joining us today on this Mayo Clinic Heart.org Medscape uh, topic review. Thank you so much.